Good morning and welcome to those joining on Zoom later on. So it's now half 11 on Tuesday morning and there will be people joining us at 7 o'clock Tuesday evening. So whether you're in here or out there somewhere, welcome to you all. So I'm going to start with some passages of scripture, all from the Psalms actually. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting and to everlasting. And let all people say, Amen. Hallelujah. O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Send forth your strength, O God. Establish, O God, what you have wrought for us. Let's pray together. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this new day. We thank you for this season of early summer, which we're entering. We thank you for all the signs of new life in creation. We thank you for the colours that we see around us. We thank you that the air is a little warmer than it has been. And we pray today, Lord, that as we gather, whether in person or online, that by your spirit, you would come and breathe new life into us. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are going to sing our first hymn, which is the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord.
reading this morning is taken from the New Testament, and it's uh, towards the end of John's Gospel. It's John chapter 20 and verses 24 to 30. It's a reading we've had uh, several times, both here on Tuesday morning, but also in Sunday mornings in church. It's a famous encounter between Thomas, one of the apostles, and the risen Lord Jesus. So it's John chapter 20 and verse 24. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Let's pray. And as we come to prayer today, we come bringing to mind that the Lord is here, that he is risen, is risen indeed. And we bring to mind that this Lord who is risen is among us, that he is present. And we bring to mind that this Lord who is present and who is here is with us now and all the time. That he is never absent. And we bring to mind that we sometimes sense his presence, feel his presence, other times we don't. And yet he is risen. He is risen indeed. Lord, we come before you and we rejoice in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And we rejoice that there is victory in his victory over the grave and over death and over all his enemies. But we also recognize, Lord, and realize that uh, we are, like Thomas, slow to believe. And we find the posture of doubt and skepticism very powerful in our minds and in our hearts. And like Thomas, we feel slow to believe. And there have been plenty of times in all our lives when we have said, I need more, I need more evidence. I want more proof. There have been plenty of times in all our lives when we have, in the face of uh, a difficult life experience, have doubted you, have wondered if you love us, if you care. And as we look at the world and its many difficulties, the same thing has happened to us as well. And so, Lord, we ask us today that you might help us 
that you might have mercy upon us. We pray that you might uh, comfort us, reassure us. We pray, Lord, that you would open the eyes of our heart, that we might see Jesus today in a new way and in a fresh way. We give to you all our struggles. We give to you all our concerns. We give to you all the things that get us down, the things in our families, the things in our lives, our physical health, our mental health, our spiritual health, all of who we are. We give to you, we bring to you and pray, Lord, once again, would you come and breathe afresh upon us? We think of the world in which we live and particularly today, we would bring to mind the situation in the Sudan um, and the new stories coming out of Khartoum, just how dangerous it is becoming and has become and that a situation that was already dreadful is now becoming intolerable for the people who live there and Lord, all we can do is to say would you do something in the Sudan you love the people there Lord you love those who live there the, those who dwell there you have established government there, even though it's dysfunctional and torn apart. And so we pray, Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, that your Holy Spirit would be brooding over that country, bringing peace where there is discord and bringing justice where there is chaos uh, and bloodshed at present. We say we pray the same same thing over Ukraine, Lord, as we have been for many months and over a year now. And we ask, Holy Spirit, would you breathe afresh? Speak to those in authority. Speak to those in government. We pray that there will be an end to hostility, that whatever is driving President Putin to warfare would now drive him to peace. And for ourselves and our own lives and our families and our cares and our households and all our issues, we pray, Lord, would you again come in, come and inhabit our lives that we might know you and see you and trust you and know that you love us. And we ask all these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory ever and ever. Amen. It's okay. Welcome. So this morning, or today, I'm saying this morning because some of us are going to be joining in later on this evening. Today we are going to be thinking or looking at briefly at that little story in John's Gospel. And more often than not, when we look at the story of Thomas, Thomas the twin, and we thought about Thomas the twin a few Sundays ago. So many things we don't know about Thomas the twin, including who was his twin. We'll, one day we'll find out. He's always referred to as Thomas the twin, and there are all kinds of ideas and theories. We're not looking at that today. And we're not even going to be thinking about his so-called doubt or skepticism. He's had a bad press as Thomas. He's no different to any of the rest of us. Today we're going to think about that exclamation that comes from his lips. So Thomas, as we're told in the story, has been missing in action, really. So on the day of resurrection, where was he? Uh, when all his friends were gathered together on, on that evening of the first day, the day of resurrection, he wasn't there. We'll never know, I don't suppose, where he was. Uh, 
in a better offer, maybe, maybe. Uh, or maybe he was just terrified. Probably that's closer to the truth. He, they were all scared. Maybe Thomas was more scared, more fearful, more anxious, and absented himself. So when he's told what well, Jesus is alive and has risen, Thomas understandably says, well, I, need, I, I'm not, I, can't, I need to see it. Your words are not enough. You, you've seen him. I haven't. I need to see him. And so the week later, there he is with the rest of them. And it's a beautiful story because um, you have a sense that Jesus makes a beeline for Thomas because... Um, he says, peace be with you. And then he says to Thomas to do something. He says, oh, Jesus is singling him out. There's a tenderness there. There's a, a care for this individual with his issues. And there's some interesting things in this story because I, whenever I've read this, I've always imagined Thomas putting his hands. Um, but of course, the text doesn't really say that. It just says, Jesus says to him, put your hands there. It doesn't say that Thomas did actually put them there. Because immediately Thomas comes out with this, out, this, out, this outburst of faith. And that's where I want us to think about that this morning. Because Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. And Thomas, like all these other disciples, were Jews. They were orthodox, devout, God-fearing, godly Jews. And there were certain things about, some fundamental things about God that were understood uh, one of them being that God was unseen and that no image could be made of God. Uh, God, you know, this was blasphemy to even portray him in any way. God was Logos, God is the word. God revealed himself historically through the prophets, through the kings, uh, through the history of his people, through the law. And here's Thomas blurting out, my Lord and my God. It's the clearest kind of exclamation, if you like, of the divinity of Jesus anywhere, pretty much, in the New Testament. It comes out of this. It comes out of this man who, with his doubts and with his issues and his anxiety, suddenly, faced with what's happened in Jesus, out it comes, blurted up, Jesus, you are my Lord and you are my God, which is an outstanding thing for a Jew to say at that time. It still is for anybody to say these days, faced with the power of the resurrection. And the reason that I've chosen this text today, because today in the church calendar uh, is the feast day of somebody else who saw Jesus in all his splendor, in all his humanity, but also in all his divinity. And this man died in the year 373 on May the 2nd, so we're told. And he rejoiced the name of Athanasius. So today we remember Athanasius, who was a bit like Thomas in the Gospels. Now, who was Athanasius? Well, we're going to say some of, or repeat some of Athanasius' words a bit later on. Athanasius came from Alexandria in Egypt, in North Africa. And um, came from a, a pagan family. I don't think he came from a, a Christian upbringing, but he got to know the faith. He was taken on by the Bishop of Alexandria as his kind of deacon, as his PA in many ways. He was bright, Athanasius. He learned all his theology from the Bishop of Alexandria, but he, he went on to become a very learned, a very erudite, very uh, knowledgeable man in the scriptures and a real defender of the faith. He's known as that, Athanasius. He's referred to that by Orthodox Christians, a defender of the faith. And uh, Athanasius was alive at a time when there was a really corrosive idea in the Christian church. So Thomas here blurts out, my Lord and my God. At the time of uh, Athanasius, there was an idea going around, well, Jesus wasn't God. He was, he was the firstborn of creation, if you like, but he wasn't God. And so Athanasius really got to grips with this, and it riled him. And he wrote against those people who suggested otherwise. But also, he, went, he was present at a council, a big council of the church in Nicaea in the year 325, 
from which we get the Nicene Creed, which is one of the big statements of faith. And Athanasius had a big hand in writing that, and we're going to be saying those, some of those words together shortly. But Athanasius' great contribution to the Christian church was to, is to, was to focus onto Jesus, that Jesus was fully human and fully God. Beyond our understanding, I mean, I, I wish I could explain it to you. I, I can't. <laughs> I'm sure anybody can. But in, his, uh, in, in who he is and was, fully human and fully God. One nature. So for Athanasius and for the Christian church, not ever since, but he, he kind of refocused us along this, that God is one. He's one. But in that oneness, in that unity, he is both. He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and so Athanasius was one of those. He was a bit like Thomas. And I guess the challenge for us, when I, when I hear about people like Athanasius, and Athanasius we can thank also, the, the 27 books that we have in the New Testament, he was instrumental in narrowing it down before the, nice, the Council of Nicaea. There were more books that could have ended up in the New Testament, but Athanasius and some other of those godly people thought, no, there's, these are the 27 which refer directly to Jesus and are about him. There were lots of other ones that were, they weren't so sure about, so he's a, pretty, he's a pretty cool guy, isn't it, Athanasius? Pretty big voice in the Christian church. But at the heart of it all for Athanasius was this understanding that Jesus is to be worshipped as God and not simply followed as a good human being. And that in our worship and in our prayer lives, in our experience, just like Thomas, we can say, Jesus is my Lord and my God. And to know that he's able to save us, that he's with us and will carry us through this life and into the next. And one day we will be with him and all the saints in glory. So Thomas could say it, my Lord and my God. Athanasius could say it, my Lord and my God. And the invitation remains for me every day and us to say, Jesus, you are my Lord and my God. Let's go back to three, 328 AD. I mean, it would have been in Latin or Greek at the time. We've got the luxury of very modern English. Um, but the, the, the people who, who formulated this creed really wrestled for a long time. I mean, I've, I've glossed over it. it these, this, it the church could have taken a very different direction after Nicaea if they hadn't gone for this. But Athanasius and those others really wanted to articulate who is God, what does he mean, and what does it mean to be a Christian. So we're going to say these words together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
And thank you, Athanasius. Shall we pray and then we'll sing our last hymn? Lord, we thank you for great men and women in all generations who have sought to clarify things which are very hard to explain and have sought to bring a greater understanding of who you are and what you've done and the mystery of your personhood. And so today on this day, we thank you for Athanasius. We thank you for Thomas, Lord, who was able to exclaim, my Lord and my God. And may that be our confession as well today, that we might know Jesus ourselves as my Lord and my God. In his name. Amen. We're going to sing a uh, a song to end which speaks about Jesus as Lord. Jesus is Lord. Creation's voice exclaims it. together grant me lord not to be anxious about earthly things but to love things heavenly and even now while i'm placed among things that are passing away to hold fast to those that shall endure through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen and may the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen.